What's up vapers? Nick here for Spin Fuels Daily Vape TV. Today we're going to be taking a brief look at the IPv3 by Pioneer 4U. So I received this mod a few days ago and I had very high expectations for it and let me just tell you it is definitely performing. So let's just take a really quick rip off of this thing and I'll explain a little bit more about it. So for those of you that don't know, this is a 150 watt box mod. It uses two 18650 batteries. Uh, right now I'm rocking 75 watts on a 0.3 ohm build and it's vaping at 5.4 volts. Uh, the battery on this thing lasts about 8 hours which is great and for heavy vaping like this at such high wattages, uh, I really, 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 really like it so far. So I just want to briefly touch on a few topics that a lot of people have been asking me about the past few days. Uh, the touch sensor on this thing, uh, it does appear to have the actual touch sensor, but right now it does not fire. Uh, I'll just show you really quick. You go to turn it on with these two buttons here. It says touch on, and it does not fire. Nothing happens. So I'm guessing this will be patched with a firmware update in the near future, which will allow you to use that touch sensor. But for now, it's completely inactive, and from what I've seen, everyone else's is as well. For me, that's not a big deal. I don't plan on really using this thing too much. I have heard in the IPv2 that if you got to drop a juice on there or something like that, it will auto-fire on you, so I'm a little weary about that fact, but uh, for me, I, I would like to play around with it a little bit. So another thing I got a lot of questions about the past couple days is whether or not it came with a charging cable. Mine actually did not come with a charging cable, however it did come with the USB cable for updating the firmware. From what I understand, the charging cable would be a little bit too expensive to include in, at the price point of $150, which is what this thing costs. Uh, you can get them out there. There is a few uh, in some of the online stores that I've seen, but I haven't really seen too many of them online or anything like that. So let's just take a quick look at the menus. So this thing features five programmable wattage settings, which you can set to whatever you like, and it'll save it in there. Um, one thing is that if you take the batteries out and put them back in, it will reset itself. So uh, not having that charging cable is a real big pain at the moment because when you take the batteries out to charge them and put them back in, all your pre-programmed uh, wattage settings are erased. However, when you have the batteries fully charged and you have all your wattage settings all set up, it really comes in handy. So first, I'm just going to vape this thing at 30 watts. So here we go. This is 30 watts at a 0.3 ohm dual 26 gauge build. Not too bad in my opinion. Uh, let's bring her up to 50 watts. Alright, so here I have it set at 50 watts and it's reading out at 4.4 volts on a 0.3 ohm coil. So as you can see, the performance just jumps way up from 30 to 50 watts. And next we're going to bring her up to 75. Alright, so I just re-dripped and we're at 75 watts. So I just want you to see this vapor production real quick. And that's 75 watts at 5.4 volts on a 0.3 ohm coil. As you can see, tons of vapor. It is getting quite a bit hotter now. And uh, for me personally, this is where I max it out. I have vaped it at 100 and 150 watts, and let me just say, it's way too hot for my liking. So on this device, you can only vape it at 150 watts on a 0.3 ohm coil or lower, meaning uh, if you have a 0.3 ohm or higher build, it's going to max out the voltage. In the manual, it reads the max output voltage at 7 volts, which that's actually incorrect. The max output for this thing is 8 volts, so you can push a 0.3 ohm coil all the way up to 8 volts if you wanted to, but that, in my opinion, is way too high for me. Uh, I get a scorching hot vapor and it goes dry in about two puffs, so uh, I prefer sticking around 75 watts, which in, in any case, I mean, most I've ever vaped before this was 30 watts, and 75 is just killing it right now as far as the vapor production is concerned. So as I've stated in a few of my other videos, I prefer to stay around 0.3 ohms for my coils, and for me, this thing is great because I can ramp it up past uh, 4.2 volts, which is what you would get out of a mech mod, and uh, I can still get a really killer vape without worrying about the battery dropping off or anything like that. I get a heck of a vape out of it for a long time, 
and so far I'm really enjoying this mod. I'll have a lot more on this when I do the full review, which should be out in a week or so. But real quick, I just want to announce the winner of my sample box contest. Chris Peltz, you're the winner. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks everyone for entering my contest. I will be running a contest in the very near future. Keep an eye out for that. Hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. Don't forget to check out www.spinfuel.com for lots more of my videos, as well as Smoke and Joey and the Vapor Trail channel. And as always, vape on.